All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the top five tips that you need for ranked or before rank 2.0. A mix of these tips are going to be stuff that you can use now, as well as stuff that you want to kind of do now to prepare for next season. Because there'll be a lot that you can do next season that's going to be coming out. I am so excited for it. But these tips are going to help you a lot. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. We're going to talk about a bunch of different things, whether it's finding a stack consistently, whether it's, you know, the best solo queue operator. There's a lot that we're going to go over today that's going to help you now and next season. So if you do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe. But let's get into it. All right, now for this tip, I want to talk about how you are going to find a five stack, how you can really just not have to solo queue all the time next season. And even now, you can come do this right now if you want to as well. This will help you. But next season, it's going to be more in effect once crossplay is out and there's way more people that you can find. Now, this is what I mean. So you see right here, right in front of me, see this, this Discord that of mine, Xbox versus PS5 videos. So this is what I'm doing next season. Uh, link will be down below if you want to join. Where well, I have this Discord where whenever I want to record these Xbox vs PS5 videos, the series I'm going to start, I'll come into the general chat and at people. They all have their own ranks and their, their roles that they can assign. They can see, you know, who is what. And I can see it that way as well. However, what I'm going to be making this, this into as well is I added this new chat called Rank Chat LFG. You can't see it because my webcam is in the way. Let me move it. Rank Chat uh, LFG. Now, um, with this, right, this is going to be if you guys... I just made this today, so it's not people talking here but whenever you want to play ranked right you come in here and you type in hey and want to play right and see how it says xbox or ps right now somebody actually can't see my webcam again great guy he says xbox or ps you won't have to worry about that next season because of cross play so you can literally come in here and be like hey who's on right now on top of that there'll be no mmr restrictions meaning it will not matter what rank you are so if people just want people to play with they don't care what the rank is they'll just come in here you won't have to worry about the 1000 difference or anything like that you can literally come into here and this is where i want to grow this so much so join if you would like to as well if you want to be in xbox with ps5 videos you literally come in here you go to the assign role up here pick your role pick your rank what you're on and you can change this whenever you want to as well you can add uh whatever rank you are as you rank up but just do that i want to actually make something for all the people who are always telling me like they're always still queuing they can't find a stack use this this is literally gonna be great and there actually is cross play coming out next season so we this is actually going to be used. Like, there's not going to be like, oh, I play on Xbox or I play on PS. No, this is it. Like, you literally come here, type in, hey, I want to play. No MMR restrictions. Uh, cross plays out. It's going to be amazing. So make sure you join. All right, so now for this tip, I want to talk about something that you should be bringing over into the next season and something that you could do now. But I always see people talking about how to play aggressive and when to play aggressive. And I think it's very hard to understand, uh, generally speaking. But once you really break it down and take in these like key factors I'm going to give you, you can, uh, you know, apply this to any situation that you're in of when to play aggressive and when to play more passive. You have to factor in a couple things. And right here on screen, this is from my recent YouTube video, right? Or like a, like last week I made this video. And I want to show you how I play, right? So I'm going to watch this clip and I'm going to break it down. So I'm going to 3v5. I'm flanking as an alibi. I, 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 I now have to play more aggressive. I got the first kill. I'm going to 2v4, okay? Now, there's a lot that's going on here. And it's giving away why I had to play aggressive here, right? And I'm going to break it all down after this. So I get this kill. I go in here. I go to check if they open the wall. They did not. So now I'm kind of forced to enter into through, through one door where they could be watching. So I'm, I'm kind of like freaking out. I'm like, okay, how can I play this now? Let me let me hug this corner so they can't see me if they peek it right away. And let me, let, me, let me be quiet and wait for someone to come out, right? But nobody came out. And because of the time I didn't swing in, right? I juke this guy out with the sound orientation because I make him think I'm going to the rotate. And then I use my knowledge to check if somebody is under, you know, in the common spot, which he is, and I down him and I get the defuse. Now, let me explain why I played aggressive here and, wh and why I played passive here. So I did both, okay? So I'm playing kind of passive up here. You, see, you hear me kind of slow walking up here, because that's out of it. You hear me slow walking up here. Now, why is this? The reason I'm slow walking is because I want to play passive so then I can start to play aggressive. I have to flank someone. I want to guarantee a kill by playing quiet. I know once I kill this person, I'm going to be loud. They're going to know where I am. Let me try and dwindle down the numbers while it's a 3v5 to at least a 3v4. So that way I can then have to worry about less people and, you know, be in the face of more, like, less people, right? So now at this point, I've made noise. People know I'm over here. They don't know where I am, though. So I'm going to play passive over here, okay? And I'm going to just wait, which I do. I Look, if you see here, this Zofia will, 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 shoot, will shoot out over here. Now I'm in this corner, luckily. This is why I tucked myself so I can kind of play passive, reload my gun, gather myself, and let the, let the person clear out this corner. Because if he's swinging this, you're, you're going to clear out the door. You're like, hold on, let me pre-fire this door and make sure no one's there. Which he does. Which he did very, very well. He cleared out the door to make sure I wasn't there. He pre-fired it. But he didn't check his other corner, which is where I was. Which is why I played passive there. Why did I play passive? I had to reload. I had to gather my thoughts and figure out how I'm going to push this. 
and then I get another kill. Now, I'm going to start to play more aggressive here, and the reasoning for this is because of the time. Time management is huge when you have to figure out when to play aggressive and when not to play aggressive. Like, if you have two minutes, you don't have to swing anything, right? But if you have 40 seconds, now you kind of have to. You have to play more aggressive based off of the time management, based off of the people that are alive. So as the clip goes on, now I'm sitting here, okay, my teammate is downed. They're going to plant the bomb. Let me swing in and get aggressive. Why? Because while they're planting the bomb and it's a 2v1, one of those people are going to be down. Meaning it's only going to be one gun up. The other person's face is going to be in the diffuser planting the bomb. So let me try and take this one-on-one -on -one gunfight because right now it's a 1v1 as they're planting the bomb. So let me try and get more aggressive. So I check and make sure I can figure out where he is, you know, hearing everything. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, he pings the guy for me, the yellow ping. I'm like, okay, I got to start getting more aggressive, right? I go this way, right? Make it sound like I am. Then I swing at this way, which I get the kill because he thought I was going to the rotate. Now here at this point, I know, okay, I have like 40 seconds left or however long the bomb planted or the bomb just got planted, right? Let, let me start to play a little bit more aggressive so we can't get to a good spot because he just got off the bomb because he literally just planted, meaning he's probably not in the best spot. He might try and rotate. Let me catch him in rotation, which I kind of did. He, he went behind the bunk bed and I kind of, you know, always check those common spots and I got the kill. Now, the things that you're going to look at when you need to play aggressive and when to play passive is going to be time management. If the time is not a lot of time, you got to play aggressive. If there's a lot of time, you could play more passive. Um, you play passive when you kind of are kind of flank and sneak up on a kill, but make sure you have enough time to where you're not like across the map, crouch walking with 20 seconds left and everyone's dead in sight. Like, no, at some point you gotta speed it up, which is what I did. Um, another way to play aggressive is going to be based off of if they're planting the bomb. If, if you're in like a 2v1 or any situation when they're planting the bomb, that is one less person looking at you. So think about that, right? Um, if you can factor in every, all these things and base it off of positioning and base it off of all this stuff, you're gonna kind of understand when to play aggressive. All right, so now for this tip, this is going to apply right now. Like, you can literally do this right now as we speak, but it's going to be even better next season. But I wanted to put this in here to kind of get you guys to prep. Like, go try this operator out. Go play him, right? So, solo queuing can be rough, and I completely understand that. And when you're solo queuing, if you guys notice, when I stream, whenever I do solo queue, I tend to play a very selfish-based operator way. You kind of have to, right? If you're solo queuing, you can't rely on going go into it like you're in a 5v5 or you're in like a 5 stack, rather, right? You have to kind of play selfish because you need to be, you need to be the one to make the calls, like make the role plays of where you're going to go, where you're going to enter in from, uh, what angles you're going to peek, what are you going to do, where you're going to push from. And you can rely off your teammate a little bit, but having to rely on like somebody who's going to play Thermite to open a wall or somebody who can get the bandits off the wall if you're playing Thermite or somebody who can set up a flank cam or get information or destroy a mozzie pass, right? All this stuff is like near impossible to do solo queuing. However, I have something that... that that I use that is, in my opinion, the best solo queue operator in the game and it's the most underrated operator in the game. And he's so underrated that they're actually buffing him next season because Ubisoft doesn't understand this. And most people don't understand this. Now, the operator that I'm talking about is going to be Zero. Now, I'm going to probably have a whole video on him um, next season, like once once he gets buffed as well. But real quick, for the people who watch this, you can see it beforehand. Zero is so good for solo queuing. Now, let me explain why. Okay. So one, his guns are really good, right? This gun, I use this over the MP7. The MP7 on attack is pretty sick too. An MP7 with a 1.5 pound, that's sick. But I do use the assault rifle. I do find it to be better. But the reason why he's the best solo queue operator is this. Let me, get, let me break this down, okay? One, he has a 1.5 times scope on both guns. 1.5 times scope is very good. Both his guns are very good. Two, he has a GON 6. I don't know why it's, this is a test server, so that's why it's not being used. And I'm not using my controller right now because I unplugged it like an idiot. But... This is, you know, the GON 6 is, you can clear utility. You don't have to rely on teammates like a Zofia or an Ash to get rid of a shield. You could do that on your own with, with zero. Three, he has a hard breach device. So you do not have to worry about a Thermite getting a wall or your teammate running in and dying as a hard breach. And now you can't open the wall. He has two hard breach devices. Okay. So we can open up two holes in the wall. Yeah, they're not huge, but they're still good to where you can go through them. And you have two of them. So you can put one at the top, one on the bottom. It's, it's, it's very, very good. Now, another thing, he has four cameras, and with these cameras, not only can you essentially drone out a room with it, right, but you can also shoot them from below, you can also shoot them through a harvest device, on top. I mean, a, a reinforced wall, and then on top of that, you don't need your teammate Twitch or your teammate IQ to go from below and get the stuff off the wall. With this, you can, as a solo queue player, shoot the zero into the wall, look down at the camera, zap the bandit off the wall, or the Cade, or the mute, and then you take your hardwitch device 
and you open the wall, you're literally a one-man army with this operator. On top of that, oh, you open the wall and now there's a shield looking at you? Don't worry, you have a Gon 6 to shoot at the shield, or a Maestro Cam, or whatever it may be. Same, if, you, if there's an Aruni Gate, you shoot one of your four cameras into the Aruni Gate, or your Gon 6 even if you have to, right? Like, this operator is the most kitted operator, and it is so underrated. I just realized my webcam was completely covering the main gun. But you, know, you can see it. Literally, this, this gun is great, okay? And this operator is great. He is the best solo queue operator in the game right now, and he is going to become meta. I've been saying this for a while, but the thing that they're doing is they are they're, they're buffing him by making him a three speed. Right now, he is a two armor, two speed, right? You see right here? Like, oh, okay. I actually, bro, I just got so confused for a second. I was like, oh my God, am I stupid? No, I'm not. It's because it's the test server. So they already put, bro, I just got to I was so confused for a second, but on the live build, he is a two health, two speed. Now, as you see here, because it's a test server, he's a three speed and a one health. Now, yes, he does have a little bit less health, but it's just like playing Ash. He can, he's just three speed now, so he can run fast, okay? And he's much faster and quicker, so it's much better. All right, so now for this tip, I want to talk about the shooting range and how important it's going to be for next season, as well as it's good for this season, too. But not much sure if you guys know, but next season, when the shooting range does come out, they're adding some stuff to it that's going to be really good for people on controller. I feel like on controller, the recoil control is definitely an important aspect that, you know, you want to learn and get down. So with this, right, let's say I'm, I want to use, I, I want to see what is the best attachment, right? Now, if you guys did not know, what you can do is I can shoot at this, right? And then I can hit the back button and it will show me, right? For example, okay, well, with the hollow A or with the 1.5 times, this was my shots. Don't mind that shots. I was just, just testing if it worked. But this is what I can see. Now, it's very important when you look at it shows all the attachments, right? So if I'm like, okay, like a big debate would be, do I use flash hider or do I use, um, you know, compensator? H how does it look with compensator? Let me check. Let me go in. Let me respawn. Let me come here, clear this off. And then let me shoot this again and see how, see how my aim is on this. And then let me press the back button and go, okay. Well, with compensator, it looked like this. With flash hider, it looked like this, right? Or how much does angled grip affect it? Like, will angled grip really affect it? if I use it over a vertical grip, like is it really that bad, right? So you go in here, and you could do the exact same thing, and you could see if it actually makes that much of a difference, and you'll look at everything, and you can mess around with all the attachments. Now the reason I'm putting it in this video, because clearly you guys do know this, but I wanted to give you this tip in saying, what you can do now is actually use the shooting range. It is actually a really good way to like just understand the recoil patterns, and I want you to try and do it now, but also, I want you to know this and before rank 2.0 comes out so that way you can do this next season when it does launch but i can come in here with this right because it's just like a person too i could just sit here i could shoot at this which i prefer this one way more and i can look here okay well this is what it looked like here let me see how this works if i use an angle grip you can do the same thing over and over again but i think this one is way better than the than this one this is not bad either but i don't know i just think my aim is way more normal how, how it's actually gonna be when i'm using this one and you can also you can do a lot of you can change the crouching one make them prone and this is this part is out now too like you can go do this right now obviously but i just wanted to put this in here to emphasize how important the shooting range is if you're trying to understand new recoil on a new sense like recoil on a new sense is something that is huge and this is the best place to do it out you know to try it out on this guy right here um recoil while you're moving like i come in here all the time and i'll just walk past and try and like strafe left and right i have a whole video on this so i don't want to go into too, too, too much detail i'm sure a lot of you have seen it, but quick, generally, what I mean by that is I will walk and I will shoot and I will try and find my sensitivity by just seeing if I can control it while I'm strafing. See, if I, you know, all that stuff, but it's very important. But I want to really emphasize how important in rank 2.0 this is going to be when this is out because this is huge. This is so good. All right, so that first last tip, I want to talk about confidence in a way, um, but I want to talk about operator confidence. And this is going to be something that I want you to look at now so that way you can kind of get it now and then kind of carry it over into the next season. Um, but for me personally, if you guys watch me, you notice that on a lot of my gameplay, I am using an operator with a 1.5 times scope. Why is that? I mean, yeah, I do crutch off of the 1.5 times. However, that's just because it's a confidence thing, right? Like, don't get me wrong. I can use a one time scope and I can still do good, but there's a lot higher of a chance that I'm going to swing someone confidently with a 1.5 times scope than I am with like a reflex scope. And that's just me personally. You might be the complete opposite. You might hate it and you might only like uh sites with the one with the one time scope whatever it is 
what I want to do with this tip is I want you to try and figure out who your comfort operator is. And I don't think it's really you know good to only main one operator. So luckily with me, I don't really only only main one operator. However, I am very confident with operators who do over 1.5 times scope. So as you see here, I have a selection of people. Okay, I can use Ash for the G36. Zero. Um, I can use Maverick. He's a 1.5 times, right? They, they, wait, they take it off of his gun? Hold on. I'm brain dead. I think they did, right? No, they didn't. Okay. So I can use Maverick with the 1.5 times, however, right? And then if I look at the defensive operators, um, they, they just take off of... Um, Alibis, which is sad. Rest in peace. She does not have one anymore. However, I can still look at people like Doc. I can still look at people like Goyo, Oryx, um, as well as uh, Capcan, right? I took it off Cade too recently too. Sad times. But what you need to do with this, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go and I'm going to go play Oryx every round and have zero utility for my team. That's not what I'm saying. However, what I'm saying is try for yourself to figure out what your comfort operators are and try and stick with them. Now, make sure that you can obviously go play other operators too, but... If you can play 10 times better with somebody like Castle with a 1.5 times or somebody like Capcan with a 1.5 times, who are still very good operators, like Capcan used to get a lot of shit. But if you watch a lot of the recent Pro League matches, TSM was using so much Capcan. Everyone does. He's really good. With his 1.5 times scope he has too on top of his utility usage, he's very, very good. But if you could be good with, for example, only Ash or only Jaeger, don't, or like only a couple operators, don't like. Just not use them because you don't want to like only be good with one operator. Like, no. Take those operators at any chance you get. Obviously, if your team needs other operators, make sure you can step up to the plate and do that. But try and figure out those operators and get good with them and just keep building that confidence. Because as you build up your confidence with a specific operator, you can then bring that confidence to other operators. But you need to build that confidence up first and show yourself like, oh, I'm so good with this person. I'm so good with this person. And that was me with Twitch for a while. I used to only play Twitch. <laughs> if you guys know, I used to only play Twitch. He's such a good operator too. But as I started to get much better on Twitch, I then was like, okay, let me use a 1.5 times on a different gun. I could do that. And I did that. I was going to bring that confidence over to other operators. So I think with you, what you need to be ready for the next season is try and figure it out. It might just be a certain scope that you're confident with. It might just be a certain operator you're confident with. It might just be a certain specific gun. Like maybe you're only good with the G36. Like we're confident with it. So you might only use Ash or Yana, right? Just try and figure it out and just practice with it. And just build that confidence up because confidence is probably the biggest thing in this game because i can go warm up for an hour right i have my game my, my aim be super good but if i don't have any confidence i'm gonna be very shaky i'm gonna be all over the place i'm not gonna believe in my gunfights i'm gonna play like shit so if you could try and build it up it will, it will help you so much so definitely go and do that and just look for operators that are going to help you on attack and defense think of the way that you can actually impact your team and help them on top of that the way that you actually help yourself um but that should help you guys the most but Make sure you guys, you know, just go and test all those out and figure it out. Be ready for next season because next season is going to be wild. It comes out on Tuesday. But hopefully you did enjoy this video. I will see y'all. Have an amazing day. Much love.